It was a lull in the Wednesday workflow at the bar. Bored out of my wit's end, tapping the counter and counting the minutes before my shift was finished. It wouldn't have been all that bad if I hadn't left my phone at home. C'est la vie, I guess. It was 3am by the time I reached home, and exhaustion hung on my eyelids like a paperweight. As I walked down the hallway of my apartment complex, eager to see myself to bed, I noticed that the front door was slightly ajar. Light beamed through the crack into the darkened hallway. I hesitantly moved closer and listened. No noise other than the flickering of the broken fluorescent tube that hung above. I peered through. My heart felt like it was beating in my throat, and my vision rumbled with pressure. Damn, I wish I had my phone, I thought. I watched and waited. I could see clearly into the sitting room, but I couldn't see any movement. I called out to my roommate. Daryl? I paused. You in there? I'm here, he called back. A sigh of relief washed over me, and I made my way inside. You left the door open, I called out again, while setting my bag down and collapsing on the sofa. Sorry, he shouted out from his room, the door of which was shut. Aren't you doing the night shifts? Sick. Oh damn, want me to get you anything before I go to bed? Nah. Daryl was never the most talkative, but during the very rare occasions our shifts lined up, he was always there to greet me when I got home from work. He also had a penchant for over-exaggerating, a bit of a melodramatic. It's the man flu, he'd commonly say. It's allergies, I'd often reply while handing him antihistamines. I shrugged my shoulders and decided that sleep was well deserved for the both of us and went to bed. That night, I was plagued by nightmares. Horrific things clad in shadows with giant maws for mouths and long spindly dagger-like fingers. They chased me, hunted me relentlessly, always at the cusp of my heels as I tried to get away. I felt like I was running through water, struggling, panting, with an overpowering stench of rotten egg assaulting my nose. They howled my name over and over until finally I awoke in a puddle of sweat. The room was pitch black, with only a little moonlight seeping through the curtains for illumination. I sat up to try and calm my rapid breathing and reached for the bedside table to turn on the lamp. Just before my fingers pulled the cord, a loud crash of something being dropped came from the foot of my bed. I jolted my eyes across, and her silhouette of a man stood there, frozen in place, watching. Sorry, it spoke. Daryl, I cried out. What the hell are you doing in here? Looking, he replied. Get the hell out, I yelled, throwing a pillow at him. He bolted out of the room and closed the door behind him with a thunderous bang. Fear replaced with ire. I tried to settle back into bed and closed my eyes, resisting the urge to look over my shoulder every few minutes. I noticed that the air seemed clearer, easier to breathe. It wasn't as heavy in the lungs, and I realized that when I woke, the smell of rotten eggs had still lingered for a time, eventually passing. The next morning, I decided to confront Daryl about the night before. Although we were close, I felt this was a massive overstep in personal boundaries, regardless of how long we've lived together. I knocked on his door. You awake? I asked. No response. I tried another knock. Nothing. I coughed, quickly noticing a slight hint of rotten egg. It was 
permeating from his room, seeping into the air around me. It was faint, but enough to make me uncomfortable. I tried opening his door. Locked. I knew he worked nights, I would often sleep during the day, so I wasn't immediately panicked. But I couldn't help but shake the feeling that something was wrong. I grabbed my phone. Hey, can we talk? I messaged him. Sure, what's up? He responded, almost immediately. At this point, I was furious. He was awake, but obviously avoiding me. So I thought. Can you come out to talk? Eh, no, I'm out of town. Since when? Yesterday, I called to tell you about this last night. I was confused. We never talked, I thought to myself. I quickly checked the call log on my phone, and sure enough, there it was. Yesterday, 9pm. Duration, 4 minutes and 6 seconds. There was no doubt about it. He did call me, and the phone was answered. My legs felt weak, and fear filtered through my veins slowly, undulating with each heartbeat. That couldn't have been right, right? I was at work, surely. Are you sure you spoke to me? I frantically responded. I waited, my eyes locked on the phone for him to respond. After what seemed like an eternity. Absolutely. Is everything okay? My heart dropped to the pit of my stomach. Then, that same smell of rotten eggs blanketed the room, suffocating, burning the back of my throat. I felt like I was going to croak. I quickly turned my head to Daryl's door and found it, slightly ajar. I got up to look closer. It's then when I noticed that looking back was the eye of someone watching me, peeping from behind the door. I didn't have time to think. I didn't have time to ask questions. My body took control and I ran. In my sudden sprint, my phone slipped out of my hand, but I didn't look back. I didn't want to see whatever was in there. I bolted for my room. I could hear it crashing through the sitting room as it gave chase. I slammed the door behind me, putting all my weight against it. It tried the handle, slowly. Then, in quick successions, yanked against the door, nearly launching me across the room. It didn't make a noise. It was silent except for the constant thumping against the door. I sat and waited and cried. It went on for hours, relentlessly. I'm not sure when it stopped. The beating against the door slowly turned into monotonous white noise, and I just sat, staring at a wall, for hours on end, waiting. Until it just vanished. A knock on the door broke me from my trance-like haze. Police, is anyone there? Someone called through the door. I didn't respond. It could mimic me. It could mimic Daryl. It could mimic them. We've been called in for a wellness check, they continued. Go away! I screamed. Are you safe? I won't let you trick me, I cried out between tears sudden yells. I heard a thundering thump against the door, the same as before, the bang rattling through my ears and jolting me forwards. Thump. The doorframe cracked from the immense force. Thump. I could hear a door handle on the other side cripple and fall to the ground with a loud rattle. Thump. I quickly moved to the other side of the room fearing that the door would topple down on top of me. Thump. As if in slow motion, the door came gliding downwards, before landing in an explosive burst of wood chipping and dust against the floor. Standing before me 
were two officers. Much of what happened next was a blur. I broke down in tears while being cradled by one of the officers. The other checked out the rest of the apartment to ensure I was safe. Apparently, when I hadn't responded to Daryl, he got worried and called the police to check up on me. I remember vividly the second officer came back into my room, his face pallid with fright. You should check this out, he said, gesturing for his partner to follow. They both left the room. Oh, what is this? It stings. The second officer yelped from outside. Curiosity got the better of me, and I had to see for myself. I found the two officers stood at the entrance of the tower's room. The door was wide open. I hovered over one of their shoulders to peek inside, and I nearly gagged. There was this yellow-like substance, like custard, stuck to the walls and ceiling in large globules of goop. It dripped to the floor in long, stringy spats, with an overpowering, wretched stink of rotten eggs that penetrated the back of our throats, causing us to gag and keel over. They quickly closed the door again, and we walked out. They were never able to find the guy. I never went back to that apartment, moved back in with my parents, and spent months in therapy. It took me a year and a change of cities before I was able to find the courage to get my own place again. I made sure I lived alone this time. I thought I was safe. Never had an instance like it since. That is, until last night. It was crossing on midnight, and I was in a sleepy haze, drifting in and out of consciousness. Just before I fell into a deep sleep, I felt a pressure on the side of the bed, like someone had sat down on the edge, slowly, as if not to disturb me. That wretched egg smell filled the room instantly. I had my back to it and I couldn't bring myself to turn. I was crippled with panic, fear. At that moment, I fully believed I was going to die. I could feel shuffling on the bed, the dips and bumps as it got closer, putting its full weight on the bed. Its breathing was erratic and had a gravelly sound to it. I could hear it right up against my neck like someone was breathing through a can of stones. It never touched me though. It just lay there, unmoving, I assume watching. I kept my back to it, my eyes on the wall, hoping that as long as it believes I'm asleep, it won't hurt me. By the time sunrise came, it was gone.